And today I'm with Milena Marinova, and uh, she's a math geek. Oh yes. <laughs> and she's super smart, and she works in AI. Actually, she's the senior vice president of product and solutions for Pearson. Yeah, got that right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you sound super intimidating on paper. So do you do anything that normal people do? What are your hobbies? In the past, I did some oil painting. I played piano. I mean, I try to exercise still and, and make time for some fitness, uh, but I don't really have much time for hobbies. It's hard to keep up with everything I need to read and everyone I want to see. So uh, the biggest luxury right now is just spending time with people that I like. Do you know the game, The Path Not Taken? It's like, if I wasn't doing this job, I would mm. have been doing something else. What would have you been doing? I would be a brain surgeon. That's cool. Definitely. Did you want to be one when you were a kid? Or? Not at all. Um, we knew so little about the brain. In fact, I was interested in neuroscience when I was in college mm -hmm. um, after high school. So that's the late 90s. Then 10 years ago, we have fMRIs that we can track some things about mm -hmm. parts of the brain. But we still don't know a lot about the brain. And I'm fascinated by um, neurosurgeons and brain surgeons who can go and with precision fix things that then make uh, a human fully functioning and completely healthy. Um, if someone wanted to take your path, what should a person do? First of all, in AI there is only the 22% of um, people who are women. Mm. So that's a very low number. So how would you encourage women to pursue their dream even if it looks so hard to do? Um, it's a really tough question. I personally never thought about it. I just was going after things I enjoyed. I was doing math competitions since I was eight years old and slowly got into logic and strategy and all these non-standard problems of math mm. and uh, I wanted to go to one of the best schools. I went to Caltech and then I said oh there's this computational neuroscience thing and we don't know much about the brain, but we're trying to mimic some functions of the brain with neurons and perceptrons and I really fell into it. It was a lot of machine learning, algorithms, math embedded into it. I'm a terrible programmer. I'm not patient. I like the big picture, but I just don't have the patience to go through line by line. But if I kind of know how things work mm -hmm. and then of course I had to do it for a while, but I just like the problem-solving aspect, um, so I didn't think about it. So I'm not sure if people specifically want to go into AI, I would say definitely lots of introductory courses available um, for younger people. Definitely pay attention to math uh, for anybody else, just not to be intimidated and find approachable things to read and start from there. What would you have done differently? Like if you could go back and think, oh, maybe I was stressing too much about this or oh, maybe I could have done this quicker, you know, mm. kind of thing. I mean, it took me many years to realize the most important thing was how genuinely good people are as opposed to smart. Mm. I think that's maybe if, if somebody had somehow managed to explain to me earlier on that it's great to be smart and you know that expression of the brilliant assholes um, I did put up with a lot of those and so maybe I wish I had wasted less time I've been reading a few articles lately and they were about like how the office is changing and like for example in the future they were thinking about this office that's not just an office anymore but it's a place where the worker spends a lot of time because it's also a hotel and a restaurant and it has gyms and all kinds of services and I was wondering, could any of these services help women who specifically face the, you know, the glass ceiling because they are thought that if they tend to focus on the family, they can't focus on their job as well. Do you think AI could supply that, could help? I think the truth is that there are always trade-offs. Um, someone close to me when I was younger used to tell me, 
remember that you can have it all, but not at the same time. I don't have children and I'm absolutely certain I could not be doing what I'm doing now or what I've done in my career and I've traveled all over the world. I think a lot of the promise that I find beneficial or real for AI is to remove um, mundane tasks. So if we could have that assisted intelligence really remove like declutter your life and your brain capacity of those menial tasks that mental load can be opened up to whether you spend time with your child or you do something else you love but in many ways just to spend time for for the things that are more meaningful thank you That's thanks fun. bye thank you so much